Uh, I'd like to talk to you about like inflammatory foodstuffs and their, their direct or indirect link to mental performance and physical performance. So what do I mean by an inflammatory foodstuff? Things chiefly that contain wheat, gluten or dairy. So white bread is a prime example, any bread actually, but I find that fresh bread causes less problems than white bread which is loaded with preservatives. The absolute worst would be a loaf of sliced white bread that horrible pasty thing that you get in the supermarket. Loaded with preservatives to make it last longer. Dairy, um, you know, you've got the whole lactose intolerant thing. And then um, gluten, you know, we all, we've all probably all got a friend who is supposedly a celiac or lactose intolerant. And we all think, well, that's not me, therefore I must be all right. And the doctor would probably say to you, well, if you're not lactose intolerant or celiac, you're fine. Well, my opinion is that Nature is never black or white, it's always shades of grey. And that we all have a degree of sensitivity to wheat, gluten and dairy. Um, certainly I'm not celiac or classically lactose intolerant. However, when I practice what's called an elimination diet, i.e. eliminating wheat, gluten and dairy, irritant foods, I notice a significant uh, increase in feelings of well-being. My physique uh, tightened up, you know, I lost subcutaneous water, I lost fat, I looked and felt and performed so much better. And my friend Mike, who um, was on antidepressants at the time, um, this is part of the reason me and him did this 12 week thing together. By the end of it, with the blessing of his doctor, he was off the antidepressants and, and stuff like that. So clearly there's a link between what we eat and how we feel, you know. But the old saying, you are what you eat, is a little bit misleading. Actually, it's you are what you absorb. And if the if we flatten out the gut, okay, the gut lining, it comes to about one square mile and it's only one cell thick. So you can see how it could be a massive site for inflammation, okay? And even if we're only ir irritating each cell a little bit, there's so many cells, there's so much surface area that combined, the cumulative effect is significant. So now, what should have been one cell thick is now one cell thick but with loads of water and loads of inflammation. And that works against us in several ways. If the blood and fluid is in the gut, well then it's not in the brain and it's not in the muscles. So it automatically you've lost some of that go juice that you know the blood and the, all these nutrients that it carries. And then since we um, need all our amino acids and all these you know sugary molecules and all sorts of stuff to cross the gut membrane so that we can then synthesize our neurotransmitters. If the membrane is now so thick that certain things can't be absorbed efficiently, well then you can see how our synthesis of neurotransmitters could be compromised, as well as our synthesis of immune uh, system antibodies, sex hormones, um, and all sorts of important you know, micro, uh, micromolecules. Um, within the nervous system, immune system and, and endocrine system. So what we need to do really is to eliminate those things which cause that swelling. And there are, there's only really one way to do that and that's to not put them in your mouth, okay? People, particularly uh, the older generation who uh, were probably um, weaned off breast milk onto formula and have been drinking milk for their entire adult life and have probably been eating toast uh, or having milk in tea their entire adult life, the concept or the idea of eliminating uh, bread and milk can be almost scary or alien to them. However, there are alternatives. Um, I mean, you know, we, we've got no physiological requirement for bread. It might taste nice, but, you know, we don't have to have it. It can become, really what you need to do is, is to evaluate the, the cost to benefit ratio. And although bread is tasty and getting rid of it might be seen as a cost, the benefits in my experience far outweigh the costs. If you want to um, eliminate uh, milk, but for some reason you've got to have that, that opaque white fluid in your tea or coffee, for whatever reason, then almond milk. You know, that's a good alternative. Soy milk, not good, because soy acts as an oestrogen, a phytoestrogen, plant-based oestrogen, and in males particularly, that's a bad idea. Oat milk, not good, because oats are actually one of the most, most inflammatory foodstuffs there are. Despite you thinking that oats are good for you, well, if they don't agree with you, they're not good for you, okay? Um, I used to eat a lot of oats as pre-workout and for breakfast, and then over the time, I, I think I was about 35, 
uh, I started to notice that I'd drink my pre-workout drink and I'd be, all I want to do is lie down on the couch and have a snooze. The last thing I felt like doing was exercising and I'd lie on the couch holding my stomach just feeling pretty poorly. I did some reading research, found out that oats, despite what I thought about them being healthy, they're not for all people, eliminated those, felt a lot better and thought I would pursue this topic. So I bought a book called The Ultramind Solution by Dr. Mark Hyman. It's, a, it's an absolute Bible when it comes to improving your health and performance through nutrition. Um, I'd never fully appreciated, I'd appreciate, I'd paid lip service to the idea that health starts on the inside, but really you can see massive, massive changes just by modifying what you eat. You know, as I said, my friend Mike was on antidepressants and that was why we decided to do this approach. It worked fantastically. Now I, it would be, unwise and unsafe and unethical of me to say to somebody on antidepressants, I don't know the medical history or whatever, and say, no, 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 you don't need antidepressants, you just need to practice an elimination diet. It doesn't work like that. If your brain is out of balance, the doctors prescribed you these things to put a Band-Aid over that balance. Essentially, you can't just rip the, ba the Band-Aid off unless and until you've redressed that balance and you've okayed it with your doctor. Many doctors believe that nutrition actually isn't that important and that supplements are irrelevant and unnecessary. Um, if that's the, the tack that your doctor takes, I suggest you get a new doctor because new doctors are much more appreciative of the fact that healing um, and optimum health you know, begins on the inside.